But John and everybody in the audience, let's welcome John back from his recent trip uh, to, among other things, visit new family members he's never seen oh, before. Oh, yeah. Uh, unbelievable. Well, you know, once you get into this genealogy thing, you find family members that you never knew existed. But I visited, I went back to New York, and I did a, a three-state tour, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, mm. visiting various cousins from various branches of the family. So, for instance, I started by uh, going across the Hudson River to Orange County, New York, where my Irish ancestors on my father's side uh, started digging canals and then got jobs at the railroad and all that kind of stuff. Uh, who, Met right, with a cousin. Was that Pennsylvania or was that so, uh, it was Orange County, New York, not Pennsylvania. Because Orange was, County, New York yeah. at Catskills, mm. near the, right near the Catskills. In fact, I stayed a night in Monticello. Did now you? you worked, you worked in the Catskills. Yeah. Didn't you? In fact, in I met, then, then I met in Monticello at, uh, uh, a coffee shop. I think it was called brothers. And no uh, on Friday, July 13th, 1962. Not that I remember the date. So I, well, I can't, why I just threw, John, this is really your vlog, but I got in my brownie points. So yeah, good. I, Monticello, good. New York. I worked in, as a bellhop. I worked as a short order cook and sure. what have you. Well, all of those great resorts are gone. They're long gone. Right. I don't know why. Kutcher's... Uh, uh, but buttons used to be up there. It's a Porsche circuit. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, as I recall, as a teenager, there was a resort for everybody. There was a Jewish resort. There was the Italian resort. There was an Irish resort. They, and they were beautiful resorts. What's the uh, the movie Dirty Dancing? Yeah, that was. And, and Linda, Linda, went, Linda and her family went for years in Monticello, New York, to uh, a, a bungalow colony. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. anyway, my Irish relatives on my father's mother's side, not my father's mm -hmm. father's side, we're still looking for relatives on my father's father's side, the Colemans. Right. We found the relatives on my father's mother's side, the Kiernans. And we, you know, there's a church with everybody's name in it. There's a gravestones. There's uh, the canal is now a historic thing. You can walk the canal. At any rate, I met a cousin we've met before. Only met him for the first time about 10 years ago mm. due to meeting somebody in the Historic Association of the Port Jervis Library. Thank God for those people. At any rate, had a great time there, then went south to New Jersey to visit my mother's father's, my mother's mother's side of the family, and then went ultimately went back to Connecticut to visit my mother's father's side of the family. Not big, but, but nevertheless, connections. And I, right. and I have to recommend to everybody, if you're going to go into this genealogy thing, it's not enough just to write down who died and, you know, went, lived here. And you really need to get in touch with the people. You really need to trade stories. For instance, in New Jersey, at my cousin's, uh, this is a typical thing that I found to be um, a very common. At my cousin's who are on my mother's father's, my mother's mother's side, <laughs> I their name is Rougeau, the Rougeau hmm. clan. So my first cousin, uh, Barbara Wall, married a Rougeau. So the Rougeau cousins, very nice people. They all, growing up, never heard anything about the Wall side of the family, my side of the family. Right. They heard about their father's side of the family, the Rougeau clan. They're all from Louisiana. So they would have family reunions in Louisiana, eat gumbo, have parties. That's all they really knew. They didn't know much about and were they all Irish, though? my side. They were all uh, Irish. No, they're all French. French. French well, uh, Creole uh -huh. from their father's side. Now, their mother's side, which is what they kind of lost touch with, which is where I come from, uh, right. their mother's side was Irish, right? But the point is, 
this happens in all families. One side, your mother has all the family stories and everybody don't, you know, follows that. And the father's side, you just lose connections. People don't keep in touch. So I found that to be true on all sides of my family. You got whoever you're talking to, a cousin, really has no clue about any of the other cousins in the other branches. Mm. It's a fascinating, fascinating stuff. Anyway, the wonderful thing about this trip was we all got to share stories. And we got to share, for instance, the Rougeau's family, I remember their grand, their grandfather, my uh, grand, my I guess he was a uncle. He was my uncle Buzz. Mm. Um, to them, he was he was Grandpa Wally. All right. To me, he was Uncle Buzz. I had stories about him that they never heard of. Had you ever met him? Oh yeah, I, oh. I, until I was about six years old, seven years old, and um, and they knew, you know, they knew him much better than I did because he, they were lived nearby and. Uh, had connections with him, and I lost touch after about seven. But I had stories that they had no idea about. And they had pictures, wonderful pictures, wow. of what was my Uncle Buzz and his father, my grandfather, their great-grandfather. So wonderful trading photos back and forth, telling stories, filling in the blanks, if you will, the nice. historic blanks of the family. Um, and of course, that branch of my family came from my mother's side with nine brothers and sisters. So there are lots of cousins to talk about, lots of stories to go back and forth. But that's a common um, expectation people should have when they go into the, um, the genealogy uh, field now, looking for relatives. That now, John, do you have, do you belong to one of these services? Like, uh, I know that Linda and I used to belong to, and I don't think we are that active anymore, but somebody else had started genie.com, which is Genie, basically yeah. just a spread, at least in the days that I knew them, just a spreadsheet of all the family trees and you can yep. add new births, but every so often somebody would add something and it would open up a whole new group of people that you never knew. Yes. Yeah. And that's another piece of advice I wanted to give our viewers. Um, it really does help to join one of these uh, genealogy services, the biggest of which I think is Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wrote down a couple of others. I've got some friends, you, you, you mentioned genie.com, that's pretty good. There's one called myheritage.com. Hmm. Um, and there's another called find my past and uh, a thing called legacy tree. I've got a cousin who filled out a whole bunch of stuff on legacy tree called me connected. So here's my advice is join one of these, fill in the information you have and contact a cousin or somebody that you know about who's a relative and ask them to fill in what they know. Mm. It's, these things work best when you have two or three relatives contributing and searching. And it's amazing how much you can, you can fill in really. But, uh, the, the, the other thing I wanted to share was that old photos are really hard to come by. Mm. And I know these these uh, services, online services, advertise with pictures of, you know, from 1840 or whatever. But believe me, they don't have the photos. You've got the photos or your cousin has them or your aunt has them. And you got to dig them out and you got to copy them and put them online and then put them into these mm. online services to share. So my cousins, my cousin in Connecticut, who is my mother's father's side of the family, she had, she had stories about my grandfather and his brother. He had five brothers and sisters, mm. his brother, Tom, her grandfather. I never knew this guy had a brother. Uh, wow. Tom, we always heard about Uncle Mike. Well, she had stories about Uncle Mike. Hmm. Um, I didn't know Michael, Uncle Mike lived till into his 90s. I, why wasn't I aware of that? I would have gone and visit the old guy, you know? So she had stories and pictures. She had a couple of pictures from, I, I don't know, 1850 or something like that. Wow. And, um, we figured out she knew who one of them was. She didn't know who the woman was. We figured out 
together, she must be this guy, Patrick Wall's wife, Margaret Wall. Hmm. So it was wonderful detective work, if you will. And believe me, finding an old picture of a, what, great grandparent, I think, uh, or great great grandparent, I don't know. <laughs> it's just wonderful. It's a wonderful discovery. So I recommend um, in person coordination with your relatives. Well, however, sure you can. So many, yeah. so many people dispersed all over a country, forget about the world. Uh, oh. I, I remember that, uh, I think we talked about this uh, last time or recently about uh, Lisa Kudrow, who do you think you are, and finding yes. your roots. Uh, that's on PBS, and they actually some of them actually go back to uh, England or Africa or wherever their roots yeah. uh, took yeah. them. So that may not be, although quite frankly, if uh, you wind up going to Europe again, for most of us who have European uh, descent, um, then uh, you might be able to run into uh, uh, somebody. Well, you probably have you ever been to Ireland? No, I never have. Uh, I bet you you'd have uh, a fun time over there. You'd find well, you, you, I, I got a quick Ir Irish story for you. My brother went on a, a trip to Ireland, just mm. really as a tourist and uh, fun. But of course, he's Irish American. And he's got an Irish name, and of course, in Ireland, if you want to stop and and have a a night's sleep well, or a a meal, you go into a pub, yeah. a local pub, very very similar to Australia, with what they call hotels, you know. So he goes into the local, the first local pub, and um, they say, "Well, you must be an American by your accent. What's your name?" Coleman. Oh, you're from Ireland. You have relatives from Ireland. Oh, yeah. Well, and if somebody would yell down the bar, "Patty, didn't wasn't there a Coleman that went to New York about how that?" Oh, sure. Well, let's have him buy us a drink. And my brother, right. my brother ended up buying everybody a drink at every pub he went to because he was Irish. Right. Irish. And I bet, I bet anyway. he has a whole bunch of cousins now. It really <laughs> yeah. Well, it turns out he could make cousins in any, pretty much in any pub he went into. Yeah. But um, one other caution, and that is family spellings. I know you're, you mentioned that your name, Kirsch, was originally Kirschenbaum. No, no, Kirschenblatt, Cherry Leaf. Kirschenblatt. Right. And my father figured that uh, uh, when we moved here, uh, before I went to school, he looked at me and he saw how bright I was and he figured I'd never learned how to spell it. So he took off the in black. <laughs> well, how many how many families have had their names changed at Ellis Island? Right. Yeah. And, and and just misspelled, you know, yes. like, uh, sure. be, because uh, somebody would pronounce something and they would write, you know, uh, uh, Fisher could be yeah. uh, F-I-S-H-E-R instead of the P-H. Yeah. Why S T E R that yep. it originally was, but that's fine. Yeah. But anyway, well, I, I have I have a similar caution, and that is, on my mother's side, of, my mother's mother's side of the family, they were able to trace back to uh, the eighteen eighteen eighties when the mm. family kind of owned a schooner, a, a, a shipping schooner, um, and beyond back to the Revolutionary War. And the Thorpe family, that branch of that branch of that branch, the Thorpe family always made a big deal about they don't spell their name with an E on the end. Mm -hmm. They always spell it T-H-O-R-P. And of course, the famous, I think it was an Indian, maybe runner, Jim, Jim Thorpe, Thorpe, World right. War II, he spelled it with an E. So, of course, my family says, well, then it can't be relative because he spells it with an E. Well, I found out in the history books, I think it was the in the Boston Arche uh, Boston uh, Genealogical Society, opening up a history book, back in whatever it is, 17, 1800, people spelled things any way they wanted. You know, a lot of people couldn't spell at all. So if you wrote down your name, you somebody else might write it down a different way. Could be the same name. Coleman was often spelled without an E. Right. I spell it with an E. Thorpe was often spelled with an E. They spell it without an E. And, and if you're tracing your heritage, you can't always go by the spelling. That's that. Right, Kirschenblatt? Absolutely. Th uh, Coleman without an E. With an E. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a lot of fun. The trip was wonderful. I got to connect with 
relatives that I have never met before but had been in contact with, and that's the best thing of all. And of course, I hit a museum, a couple of museums and things along the way to do. So, so when are you going to go on a trip to find the really wealthy relatives who've been looking for you all these years to give you your inheritance? <laughs> yeah. A lot of disappointment there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, I recommend um, genealogy as a hobby. Uh, it's terrific. I think it's a little bit of history. It's a little bit of family. Um, and of course, it can be addictive. So I warn you about that. Now, well, so I'm going to I'm going to finish this off, John, by saying that John and I had something we want to share with you uh, and which we know will make you want to subscribe and tell a hundred of your closest friends to, to subscribe to the Celebrating Act 2 YouTube channel. Right. Most of us, OK, are related to the Celebrating Act 2 clan. Yes. Yes. And we are so all members of that clan. So we're all we're all in that same family tree of living longer, healthier lives. So please subscribe to Celebrity Act 2. And you will then have a front row seat to more of this nonsense every week. <laughs> we love you. Stay healthy and call a relative, will you? For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.